today we will discuss the toroidal plasma device called tokamak in detail. We shall discuss the schematic of a tokamak, then discuss the plasma equilibrium first on the basis of a single particle motion and the constant of motion that we deduced last time and then we will go over to grad Shafronov equation that talks about a general equilibrium of a plasma and if time permits I will discuss how would you produce current by using induction effect in a plasma for both purposes for the purpose of plasma confinement as well as for the purpose of plasma heating. Let me begin with the schematic of a tokamak that we had we were discussing last time. So, tokamak is a toral device it has some cross section maybe one can choose a tokamak with a circular cross section it could be different in circle also and then it can go like this and go like this. The distance from the axis of the system to the center of the plasma is called measure radius and is r, but I will keep r as a variable it can be from here to here anywhere in the plasma. And I will be using a cylindrical polar coordinate system in which this direction here is my phi direction. So, this is my phi direction plasma will be allowed to have a current in this direction and also a magnetic field in this direction B phi and also a current I phi. B phi is produced by a set of coils schematically I will denote them as these kind of turns, but basically these are very thick single coils because the current that you want to pass through them is hundreds of amperes maybe close to several hundreds of amperes or kilo amperes current has to pass in them because you want to produce a magnetic field typically of the order of 10 tesla. The magnetic fields that are envisaged on ITER the biggest machine that will be typically of the order of 10 tesla which is huge. So, you require very large very special kind of coils and people are rather using superconducting field coils to carry huge current in them and a current is needed here that will produce a polaroid magnetic field to compensate for two drifts which are dangerous curvature drift and grad B drift of electrons. If this is not there then the plasma cannot have a equilibrium. So, we would like to examine that issue. Well, in this configuration I had written the magnetic field in the plasma as B is equal to the azimuthal magnetic field B phi that is produced by external coils plus a polaroidal magnetic field produced by the plasma current I phi and this B p was expressed as curl of a vector potential A p and A p was having only phi component. So, this I wrote down as A p into phi however, A p depends on r and z it has no phi dependence because we were talking about axisymmetric plasma confinement and in that configuration we found that a quantity called 1 upon r into m r square phi dot minus e then it was r 
a p is a constant of motion is equal to constant of motion actually this was not 1 upon r d d t of this quantity was this is d d t of this quantity was 0. Hence, this quantity inside must be a constant of motion and if I define a quantity azimuthal velocity of the particle is equal to r this is phi dot here phi dot is the time derivative of phi and uh, if I define p phi the momentum of the electron due to azimuthal motion then this quantity is m r phi dot in so when i write down this constant of motion i get i can rewrite this as r common multiplied by p phi minus e a p and a p is also in the phi direction is a constant of motion Now, the implication of this is important. This simply says that if somewhere r is very, very little, if particle, if the particle goes from one region in tokamak to another region and a p changes, then p phi must also change. However, in a magnetic field when a charged particle moves, magnitude of momentum does not change, only direction of momentum changes. Consequent, consequently, the maximum change p phi can undertake is equal to particle magnitude of momentum and that is fixed. Consequently, all regions of the tokamak are not accessible to the particle because a p changes too much from one region to another. So, that puts a restriction on particle motion and confines the particles. Let me make some estimate how much a p can change. For that I consider a special thing. Let me consider my tokamak cross section like this. Now please this is center of the plasma center of the to or axis of the tokamak passes through here this is capital R. Now, please consider any point two points here these two points here and visualize because as you move away from here if there is a current in the plasma which is perpendicular to the cross section here axial because the phi direction is perpendicular to is phi direction is here which is perpendicular to this plane. So, what I am saying here is that if I consider a loop other cross section of the tokamak will be like here let me just draw this here. So, if I consider some two points here means draw two circles round the tokamak one at this height. and another one at the side. So, consider two paths, two circular paths and those paths are just joined with each other, they are cut. What I am suggesting is that please consider on the torus, the torus, torus, torus is like this one this this portion goes like this this is a kind of torus you are having and this is a closed curve so please consider two circles one above the other if this is my z axis i am suggesting that consider a circle like this of radius capital r another circle also of capital radius r but shifted in z by certain amount delta. 
So, this is the displacement in z direction and I will call as delta z or delta. So, please consider two loops because I am expecting that when the particle from one position in the cross section moves to another position say in the z direction we have learned that the electron will undergo curvature drift or grad b drift in the minus z direction and ions in the positive z direction. So, I am considering when the particle goes in the z direction how much a will change so, in order to estimate the change in a I am considering a loop which is made of like this it is a one loop in the x y plane another loop also in the x y plane, but shifted in z. So, this is this may be z equal to 0 plane another loop shifted, but slightly above this. that would be above this so the two loops are shifted from each other by distance delta now consider the flux magnetic flux linked with the surface the total length of this path of radius r would be 2 pi r and height is delta. So, total area would be 2 pi r delta of this. I want to calculate the magnetic flux linked with this. Please understand I am considering this circle along the phi axis of the tokamak and this is at a different. So, the radius of the both circles are same only difference is that one is at z equal to 0 plane and the other one is at a height z equal to delta. Now, let me calculate this integral flux linked to this loop. This loop I will consider like any path I can consider like this and going backward on the other one. So, in the inner curve here and then path goes line integral is like this and surface integral is over the area. So, flux linked to this strip. circular strip. Let me call this flux by some number maybe phi b. This quantity would be magnetic field dot the area of the strip. Now, this b because this entire strip is tangential to phi and hence only polarized magnetic field will contribute to this, but B p is expressible as curl of A p potential vector potential dot d s. Using a Stokes theorem I can convert this into a line integral which is equal to A p dot d l this is a line integral. The path of the line integral I have demonstrated here. This path goes here. You may note this is a closed path. It moves in the end anti clockwise on one circle and in the clockwise sense on the other circle. One circle is in the z equal to 0 plane and the other circle is at a height delta along z axis. So, what do I get here a p dot d l d l the length primary length of this coil is in the phi direction and a p is independent of phi. So, it is a constant. So, when you move on one circle a p will have one value and when you return on the other circle at a certain height a p will have a different value and the contribution through the line integral from these two arms will cancel out because the direction in one arm is upward and the other is downward. So, they will cancel out. So, the basic contribution to this integral comes from this long curved path and this turns out to be equal to total length is 2 pi r 
into change in AP. Difference in this quantity, so let me call delta or change in this quantity. Because of change in AP, there will be some finiteness in this integral. So, the flux linked with a, a strip, circular strip of height delta, z height delta and radius r turns out to be so much. But actually is how much? Just in this strip suppose the value of polaroidal magnetic field is B p and the area is 2 pi r delta. So, just put this is equal to 2 pi r into delta into polaroidal magnetic field means when the electron goes a distance delta in the z direction then the vector potential changes by so much amount given by this and I get the value of delta a p change in a p is equal to 2 pi r will cancel out. So, change in vector potential a p in going from one value of z to another value by displacement delta this is equal to delta times into b p. This delta is not a product with a p say change in a p maybe I will it will be better if I call this as delta a p is equal to this delta is the displacement between the two loops into b p. So, when the electron goes due to curvature drift or grade b drift along z direction by a distance delta it sees a change in vector potential by this amount and when vector potential changes then obviously p phi must change because we know that p phi minus e a p is a constant of motion. So, any change in a p must result in change in delta p. So, delta p phi will be of the order of e times delta into b p sorry b p. But the maximum value this quantity can undertake is actual momentum of the particle. Hence, this delta has to be satisfying this condition delta into b p or delta must always be less than p upon e b p. This is the maximum displacement a particle can go from the center of tokamak if they are rotating around the center of tokamak in the beginning then it cannot move too much away from there in the z direction or away from the in any direction it will not be moving. Now, let me calculate this quantity for an average particle moving with thermal velocity then what you find is delta the displacement of an electron along z direction would be typically delta always be less than or of the order of p upon e b polaroidal. If I write down p as m into thermal velocity of electrons then this is e b p e b p upon m I will call as the cyclotron frequency due to polaroidal magnetic field and I can write down this is v thermal upon omega p with cyclotron frequency due to polaroidal magnetic field. So, if I am defining this is equal to e b p upon m cyclotron frequency of electrons due to poloidal magnetic field 
this is that magnetic field that is produced by azimuthal current and is perpendicular to the phi cap direction is the important thing. You may note that this excursion delta could be more for the ion because V thermal goes as 1 upon under root mass. So, this whole quantity is proportional to root mass. So, this entire quantity is proportional to mass of the particle to the power half means electrons will be largely confined to within the center of the plasma, but ions can go a longer distance and hence this condition should be one must satisfy a condition that this delta should be much less than the minor radius of a tokamak. So, for confinement the essential condition is that mass of the ion into thermal velocity of ion upon E B P should be less than much less than the minor radius of tokamak. It is a very interesting thing. So, particles are primarily confined by the azimuthal magnetic field. If you can choose typical radius of major radius of tokamak as around a meter or more and aspect ratio means the ratio of minor radius to major radius is around one third. So, if you are talking of a tokamak whose minor radius is about 30 40 centimeters 40 centimeter typically, then this quantity should be having a value may be less than 0 0.3 uh, sorry uh, maybe one third one half or maybe one tenth of minor radius which is putting a lot of restriction on BP. That a certain minimum value of BP is required and BP is produced by the azimuthal current and typical currents that can satisfy this condition are in the order of mega ampere. So, this condition provides an estimate of minimum magnetic field required for plasma confinement in a tokamak you require a toroidal current of the order of maybe half mega ampere or mega ampere to have ion and electron confinement in the plasma. I think now I would like to talk of plasma equilibrium in some general term. In one of the lectures I had talked about equilibrium that if I want plasma to be in equilibrium then a time independent equilibrium then J cross B should be equal to gradient of pressure, where J is the current density in the plasma, B is the magnetic field in the plasma, total magnetic field by external currents and internal currents and P is the pressure in the plasma. We had deduced this equation. I would like to draw some important consider criteria for plasma confinement from this equation. First thing that one may notice from here is that B dot grade P is 0 and similarly if I take J dot of this equation then J dot grade P is 0. What are we expecting? Inside a tokamak always keep the view this is the cross section of a tokamak and you are expecting that whenever you move in the phi direction this phi direction wherever you go the pressure will not change current magnitude will not change you are expecting the magnitude also not to change. So, we are talking of axisymmetric equilibrium in which P can vary only with Z the vertical coordinate actually in this this will be z coordinate along from here center to the rim and one of them would be x, uh, uh, r. So, what I am saying here is that B field must lie on a surface of constant pressure grad P means 
this is a vector quantity perpendicular to the surface of constant pressure. So, B field must lie on the surface of constant pressure and similarly this says that J must lie on the surface of constant pressure. So, a surface of constant pressure that may whatever shape it may have, it may have a circular shape like this, these are the surfaces of constant pressure or it may have a shape like this, it may have a shape like this. The surfaces may be coming close to each other here, they may be farther from here, but they cannot cut, cut each other. So, if I have a, any surface of constant pressure on the cross sectional plane, a plane perpendicular to phi cap, then J and B must lie on this surface. The surface of constant pressure will also be a surface of constant because B field will be lying parallel to that. So, this is called magnetic surface. So, first of all we are saying that B will lie, the lines of force will always be tangential to the surface of constant pressure. A surface of constant pressure, so let me write this in words, magnetic field lies on the surface of constant pressure. The same thing happens with J, J also lies on the surface of constant pressure. So, any surface of constant pressure is also known as magnetic surface magnetic field is tangential to the surface. This is one very important thing that we have seen. Just by simple consideration, we note this. And since we have been writing B poloidal is equal to curl of A P, we have seen that there is a constant of motion which was in terms of a quantity R A P. So, I would like to first of all express these P though in general they are functions of R and Z, J is also a function of R and Z and B is also a function of R and Z, there is no phi dependence for axisymmetric system. So, delta delta phi is 0. In view of this, I would like to introduce a quantity called flux function. Psi. Let me define this. This is something very important in plasma jargon. In plasma literature, this is very often used, and I would like to draw something, deduce some right. Uh, Let us understand the meaning of this quantity. What I am saying is that in a tokamak when you move, this is the cross section please keep this in view and also keep this picture of a tokamak like this. So, if I draw any plane anywhere perpendicular to the phi direction, this is my phi direction. So, draw a plane somewhere here or anywhere, suppose this is one of the planes that I have drawn which is suddenly perpendicular to phi axis. So, this may be my x direction and this is my z direction because phi axis I have chosen perpendicular to this. Now, what I am saying that in this plane, if I can think of you know the lines of force that you are expecting are all like this magnetic lines of force will be like this circles and they will not cut each other. They may be close to each other here, but may be farther from each other here. But if you take any cross section, 
any draw any line from here to here or from here to here the number of lines of force that will cross this will be same. So, let me draw this bigger picture here if I take any point here on x axis then the lines of force could be like this. And now please, please visualize a circular strip that goes round. So, this is the cross sectional view here and go round the torus. When you go round the torus in phi direction, and if you go from center of the plasma to any surface here, this surface or this surface, anywhere on the surface, so choose any surface, then the total magnetic flux linked with this strip would be how much? This is the quantity I call psi prime. The total magnetic flux linked with the strip, the total length of the strip will be 2 pi r kind of thing because I am going 2 pi r distance here multiplied by the width, but the length also varies. So, let me call a quantity flux linked with this strip of some inner radius r and outer radius r dash etcetera. So, that let me write this on a separate sheet the flux sorry flux linked to a circular strip just as the kind of strip I had drawn in my earlier discussion of constant of motion or you could have considered a, a strip which is horizontal that was vertical strip this is a horizontal strip does not matter. Then I am talking of polaroidal magnetic field dot d s and this is equal to curl of a p dot d s by using the Stokes theorem I can write down this is a p dot d l. So, I am having a strip circular strip like this inside a tokamak, tokamak may be your actual tokamak is something like this. It is not a proportionate plot, this is the inner side of the tokamak, this is the outer side of the tokamak and I am considering center of the plasma is here. So, I am considering a strip of this, this area, this is the strip on which I am calculating my integral. What I am saying here is that this area that I am considering here, I can just have a small cut here and so this will be a strip over which I am evaluating this quantity and this quantity is the flux linked called as psi dash and this quantity turns out to be because a p does not change with phi uh, with the phi. So, there will be a p in the inner in the central region and outer region, but in the center because you can take a p to be 0 there is no magnetic field there and you can take a p there is always a constant available there and you can take to be 0. So, the a p will be basically a p value at the outer circle or on the flux surface, flux surface multiply by the total length which is equal to 2 pi r. So, if I consider any flux surface flux surface please understand is a surface of constant pressure on which li lines of force are tangential. Then the vector potential multiplied by r is the total flux linked with the strip starting from the center of plasma to that surface and hence 
if I divide this by 2 pi, I call a quantity flux parameter which is psi dash upon 2 pi into A p which is equal to A p into R. So, rather than talking about A p magnitude of A p which is A p phi, I should be talking about A p R which is a more reasonable thing. So, what we really are seeing is that though p, b and j they depend on z and r, but it should be possible for us to have their dependence only on one quantity called psi. So, flux is I want to introduce as a parameter rather than x and z as para or r and z as parameters, I want to introduce psi as a parameter. Well, once this is there, let me express polonal magnetic field which is curl of AP and if you put the value of AP, take AP in the phi direction. and A p I am writing as psi by r because r A p I call as psi. So, A p is psi by r phi cap and substitute it here and evaluate this quantity. It turns out to be equal to 1 upon r gradient of psi which is a scalar quantity cross phi cap. Just by substituting this in here, I can write down my polarity magnetic field as gradient of psi cross phi cap and by similarity I can introduce another function f such that j the current density which is polarity current density in the plasma can be written as 1 upon r gradient of another function f cross phi cap. I do not know what I f I should choose, but just as for B p I have chosen a vector potential in terms of a scalar function psi, I think I believe that I can write down J p also in terms of a scalar function f, but I should find a proper a scalar function f that is the issue. Now, what you can see here that B p dot gradient of p is 0. Why B p? Because j cross b was gradient of pressure and gradient of pressure has no phi component. So, this should be true. And if I substitute for B p this expression, then one can deduce from here that gradient of psi, this gradient of psi cross gradient of p equal to 0. Just by substitution you can get this. So, the surface of constant psi and the surface of constant pressure this essentially says this must be same. So, p should be expressible because if p is a function of psi only then this will hold. So, I am saying that this equation implies that I can write down this p as a function of psi rather than calling this to be a function of r and z, I will say that my pressure is a function of psi. And similarly, because j dot grad p is also 0, I get gradient of f cross gradient of p also equal to 0 and this says that f is a function of a function of p and since p is a function of psi I must say that is a function of psi. Now, these are two very vital things. 
So, rather than saying that my current magnetic field etc are functions of r and z, I say that they are functions of psi the magnetic flux. So, I will treat magnetic flux as a variable, a space variable, but still I would like to find out in what way it depends on r and z. Once the dependence of r and z uh, of psi on r and z is known to me, I can write down my magnetic uh, polydial magnetic field and so on. So, let me go over to deduce a general equation governing psi, because if psi is known to me, everything else is known to me. Now, in order to arrive at the equation governing psi, I again start with the equilibrium condition. I think before I do that, let me also realize a connection between this function f and magnetic field B phi. Is it related to that? Let us examine this issue. You know J the current density is related to curl of B as 1 upon mu 0. So, from here if I write down say radial component of current density, this turns out to be equal to minus mu 0 1 upon mu 0 delta delta z of b phi, but b phi we have already written sorry j r we have already written as 1 upon r gradient of f cross phi cap. So, I should take radial component of this which turns out to be equal to minus 1 upon r delta f by delta z, because f is still something unclear to me, but by equating these two I get a connection between f and b, because 1 upon delta delta z is there and r and z are independent variables. So, I get a connection between these three, these two phi and f and it turns out to be that f is equal to from here r b phi upon mu 0, where mu 0 is the magnetic moment uh, sorry magnetic permeability of free space. So, f which in terms of which I am defining my current j is equal to 1 upon r grad f cross phi, the same f is related to azimuthal or toroidal, mag toroidal magnetic field B phi. This is the relationship. Now, let me return back to my pressure balance equation j cross B equal to grad P equation and what I see is this grad sorry grad P is equal to j cross B. This is my initial equation. For equilibrium of a plasma, this is a essential condition, time independent equilibrium. J I write down as J phi phi cap plus J poloidal, there are two kinds of currents in general possible, cross B also has two term terms, a toroidal magnetic field plus a poloidal magnetic field and this is equal to gradient of p. Now, please note that we have been saying that j is equal to 1 upon r gradient of f cross phi cap and b p we have already said is equal to 1 upon r gradient of psi cross phi cap. So, J and B P are like this. First of all, you may note that if I take cross product of the first term with the first here will be 0, because phi cap cross phi cap is 0. Secondly, you may note here that if I take phi J P cross B P will be how much? This is J P actually. This J P cross B P if I look here, please note 
this quantity grade f because this depends on psi is the same thing as delta f by delta psi or d f by d psi whatever you write it into 1 upon r gradient of psi cross phi because f depends on psi alone and through psi it depends on other quantities. So, this I can write down like this and then same direction. It means that the cross product of the first term here with this is 0 and the cross product of the last term here with the last term here is also 0. So, only cross terms survive and this equation becomes a rather interesting simple equation and that gives me let me write this as this cross this. So, j phi and phi cross B p, B p is this term. Let me write down B p as 1 upon r. So, this is grad psi cross phi cap and then this crosses with this. Now, this is J p cross phi cap which I can write on minus phi cap cross J p. So, J p I will write down this expression J p is 1 upon r grad f cross phi cap and then there was b phi left out. So, b phi and this is equal to right hand side grad p. This is the equation when I substitute for j phi and b phi in terms of psi this is known as the grad chevron of equation which is a very important equation, but let me move gradually. This grad phi I will write down as grad psi. So, now what I am going to do everywhere I am going to get some sort of a grad term. Now, please note this is like a cross b cross c you can always write down a cross b cross c as b into a dot c. Let me just mention this identity. If there is a cross b cross c, this is always equal to b vector a dot c minus c vector a dot b. Here we are having terms like phi cap cross grad psi cross phi cap. This is equal to grad psi phi cap dot phi cap which is unity then minus phi cap into dot of these two. So, minus phi cap into phi dot this quantity. So, means let me write down phi dot grad psi, but as I mentioned to you there is no variation in phi. So, this grad del has no phi component. So, this is 0. So, this is equal to simply gradient of psi. So, what I can do if I write this grad f is equal to delta f by delta psi into gradient of psi because f does not depend on anything else and grad p is equal to delta p upon delta psi into gradient of psi. Then in that equation all terms have grad psi common and you can cancel that then this equation takes the following form. So, let me write down that equation. J phi turns out to be equal to R delta pressure by delta psi actually I could have written DDT, DD psi also plus b phi into delta f by delta psi.
but b phi I can write down in terms of mu 0 f by r as proven before. So, r delta p by delta psi plus mu 0 f upon r into delta f by delta psi and how about j phi? j phi we will use this equation the last Maxwell equation or Ampere's law which says that curl of B is equal to mu 0 j. Now, let me write down the phi component of this equation. It turns out to be j phi is equal to 1 upon mu 0 this goes here and take the phi component which has delta delta z of B radial component minus 1 upon mu 0 delta delta r of B z and since we know B r by definition is equal to minus 1 upon r delta psi by delta z and B z is equal to 1 upon r delta psi by delta r from the definition of psi. We get this substitute this here you get j phi as minus 1 upon mu 0 into r multiplied by d 2 psi by d z square plus r delta delta r of 1 upon r delta psi by delta r and using this in the equation for j phi that I had written I get the grad Saffronov equation which is r delta delta r of 1 upon r delta psi by delta r plus d 2 psi by d psi is d z square is equal to minus mu 0 r square d p by d psi minus mu 0 square f delta f by delta r. This is a general equation that will govern psi. So, if I presume some profile of pressure as a function of psi, I can write some expression here and also assume f which is the b phi how does it vary with r because this f is related to b phi I just mentioned that b phi is equal to or f is equal to b phi into r upon mu 0. So, if I presume any functional dependence for f on psi or you can take f to be constant as well. In this case if f is a constant independent of r then this is 0 this sorry this is delta delta psi not r this is psi here. So, if I take delta f by delta psi to be 0 and choose some value some functional dependence of p on psi this equation can be solved numerically to find out psi as a function of r and z and that will give you. So, for different profiles of p versus psi you will get different kind of equilibria. Now, if psi is known to you as a function of r and z p is known to you as a function of psi, psi, uh, r and z because I have already assumed a functional dependence for a p and once this is done then j also I have known because if I have obtained uh, defined some specific value of uh, or dependence of f on psi then because j was related to gradient of f cross phi cap. So, everything is determined self consistently 
and uh, I will just give you a typical numerical solution of this equation that people have carried out. Many other solutions have been carried out. Let me just mention this. Uh, for one profile of or dependence of p versus psi and f versus psi, people generate this kind of plot. So, the EQ pressure surfaces are like this. They are also called magnetic surfaces. This sort of magnetic surface people get and if I plot as a function of this is called minor radius, treat the center of the plasma as the origin and move along outside. So, r if I plot as a function of r then or x whatever then the b file profile is like this b phi is a function of r and uh, the profiles turns out to be current density profile is like this. This is the current density slightly tilted uh, outwards and the pressure profile is also similar. Let me draw by different color. this comes like this something like that fairly I would say that this is the profile for P this is the profile for toroidal current J phi which is not uniform and uh, you can in the central region you can take it to be something like parabolic current density profile pressure profile is also like parabolic and B field profile decrease as you move away towards the outer side of the tokamak. I think uh, I stop here and uh, we shall discuss other aspects of tokamak in our next lecture. Thank you.